Guys, over the last couple of weeks, we've been on a journey together. We started this journey by talking about David and Goliath and the five stones. Uh, I find myself today in a place that I love very much. When I think about a weight room, I, I love coming to work out and, and learning, loving to get strong and, and uh, to better myself. And I think of strength. Uh, and when I think of the word strength, when you look at Scripture, uh, one of the stories that, that really sticks out in my mind, a story of picture of strength, is the Battle of Jericho. Uh, one of my most favorite stories. And today, what I want us to talk about, as we think about stone number three, I want us to think about the stone, if you will, the, the walls of Jericho. Now, I'm not sure how familiar you are with uh, biblical archaeology and all the the artifacts and some of the studies that have been done about the walls of Jericho, but the walls of Jericho were just massive walls. And it housed thousands and thousands of people, including great warriors and a king. Now what you need to understand is that Joshua, when he took over leadership of the children of Israel, this was like his first big deal, okay? And so he comes up to uh, this battle, as he faces this battle, he had specific instructions of the Lord, from the Lord, for him to lead his people and his mighty men of valor into battle. And guys, I need you to understand, I don't know how familiar you are with the story, but it's pretty crazy. When you think about what actually went down, when you think about the instructions that God gave to Joshua, it just boggles my mind. Picture this for just a minute, if you will. Here's Joshua, and he's got his soldiers. And he says, okay, guys, here's the deal. On the first day, we're going to walk around this entire city one time. And then the next day, we're going to walk around the city again one time. And we're going to repeat that for six days. So each day, we're going to walk around the city one time and just think with me just for a minute all these guys are going okay what what's going on here all right guys on the seventh day we're gonna walk around the city seven times and then there's the specific instructions about the singing about the trumpet playing about the yelling that will take place at a specific time and when that happens, the walls are going to fall down. Joshua says that to his people. That this is the word from the Lord. Now, I'm not sure what all those soldiers must have been thinking when he said that. It had to be pretty crazy. But guys, here's the deal. There was something about Joshua that these soldiers saw and they knew that this was the deal that they were about to see something that the world could never explain away. In fact, archaeologists since that time, when they have done studies on the actual walls of Jericho, have determined that these walls did fall, but they couldn't have fallen by an earthquake. That the way they fell was in such a way that it was something amazing that they can't explain, which I love because the Bible explains it. Here's the deal. Here's the point. Right when those soldiers and those the people, children of Israel, they followed through with the plan. I want you to listen to the story. It's really important that you get this. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, I love that. He'd given the commands and the people did exactly what he said because Joshua told them exactly what the Lord said. I, I love that. So uh, they rose up early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark of the Lord walked on, and they began walking around the city. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp, and so they did this for six days. They're following through with what Joshua said. On the seventh day they rose early at the dawn of the day and marched around the city in the, in the same manner seven times. And at the seventh time when the priest had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. 
and the city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Guys, right there, when that happened, and he gave those specific instructions, they gave a shout, the walls came down, they took the entire city, and not one of the other soldiers in the, in the city were spared. Complete destruction. That stone was rendered useless. That third stone, the walls of Jericho. I want you to understand something. One of the things that's so important in that passage of Scripture is that uh, they were given specific instructions not to keep anything for themselves. All of, the, all of the spoils, all the gold and silver and everything was to be devoted to the Lord. Why? Because this was about Him. Guys, you've heard me say, this is the third week in a row now, I've said this. This journey that you're on is not about you. This is about the Lord Jesus. Guys, you're, you're facing something right now. You're up against something and you know that it's almost like this is us against the world. <laughs> that when we, when we approach this, it's like nobody's giving us a chance. For some reason, God has placed you in this position. There's no question in my mind that God has placed you here for a reason. Delta State University, outstanding institution, great legacy in so many ways, academically and the aeronautics world and all that kind of stuff. In football, yeah, they won a national championship seven or eight years ago. But this is a new day. This is a different day. Guys, here's, here's what you understand. When you, when you step out on that field on Saturday, it's really important that you see this. Yes, you're a long way from home. Yes, you're a long way from Crusader land. But I want you to remember this passage of Scripture as you take the field. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. Guys, it's really important that you understand something. This is, this is not about you, okay? This is about a bigger picture. This is an opportunity to bring glory to Almighty God. And when you take that field today, it is so important, or to, whenever that time is, when you take that field, the cry 212 that maybe nobody else understands and they may think it's silly, and that's fine. But you know what I'm talking about. The cry of 212 I want you to picture in your mind the heroes of heaven screaming to the top of their lungs, 212, 212, 212. When you take that field, understand this, you have an opportunity to do something that nobody ever thought was possible. You have an opportunity to shout for the glory of the Lord and the walls of Jericho will fall down. You listen to your commanding officer, in this case your coaches, you follow through with their plan and you do everything to the best of your ability. And when a mistake is made, 212, raise the bar, encourage each other. The opportunity of a lifetime, right now, to watch the walls of Jericho fall and for the name of the Lord be praised. 212, 212, 212.